Is there an unwitting role being played by the press in this these thuggish tactics, if true, on the part of the Obama administration? That's outlandish. That's you know that's the part of it. You're absolutely right. You know you sort of get it get at our own integrity. Nobody likes to see these threats. Now you know it sounds like to me, and what these guys have been wanting to do, right? You know you have the the White House is they've been trying to walk this line when it comes to this populist anger at Wall Street, and at the same time. They're afraid that they look like sometimes they're coddling Wall Street when it comes to the big bailout and all this stuff. So they're trying to, at one time, it's like part of the political operation of this place is not unhappy that there are hedge fund guys all upset that the White House threatened them, right? Because they think that that might actually play well in, in, in Pitchfork America. Uh, angry America right now that's angry at Wall Street. At the same time, that's just, I mean, if that is what happened at that meeting, that's a... Uh, that's, that's well, a don't you think it's charge. odd? That's a very, it's a very, you know, and like you said, you read that it was a very carefully worded statement by Bill Burton. Just no there, evidence. Uh, you know, no evidence. I mean, you're Yeah, there's you're no dress. Right. Was, there's no blue dress, yeah. Okay. Right. It was Mercury-esque. Yeah, I mean, let's, it's ridiculous. Now, you guys, you guys stand when President Obama makes a surprise uh, appearance go. in the, in the uh, briefing room. Do you guys stand for Bush? Well, here's the thing. I stood for Bush. I'll take that as a no. I was in the room. I was in the room once with President Bush as White House correspondent. I was talking to Mark Noller and Bill Plant, the two, you know, two veteran CBS reporters, and there is a rule, there's an honor, uh, whatever it is, the rule, unofficial rule, whatever you want to call it, that when a president comes into the press room, you don't stand, right? It's the press room. You don't stand for that. And that's, you know, they're uh, they're pretty fired up about it that the uh, press corps stood up. So, you know, they're the, to me, they're the keepers of the tradition. When, I, when I'm always wondering, you know, I've been here, what, 105 days, so or 106 since I had a couple of days in the in the Bush administration. Those two guys usually know what the traditions are, and you know they said, "Look, the tradition is uh, that you don't stand when a president comes in the press room. It does happen ever so often, and you don't do it." Well, I mean, are they going to applaud today or throw confetti? All right. I mean, okay. Well, did you it, 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 did you I stand? Did, well, we didn't get. I wasn't there. On Friday, oh, okay. I, got yeah, lucky you. I got the I got the Mike McCurry esque plausible deniability. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. I mean, there, and I, it seems like a lot, a lot of reporters just relish saying, "Mr. President." And I, well, is it just I, me? Look, am I, am I reading fair, too much into it? No, I think you are reading a little bit Mr. into it. And I, and I went with, you know, like I say, I, go, I went back to. I was just talking with Bill Plant about this this morning, and mm-hmm. and you know, he's saying, "Look, at the beginning of every administration, and it's been regardless of party, there's always more deference given." And as these guys are in office, there's less deference because, you know, we're penned up in this in, in, in this little place. And, you know, after a while, we get more ornery, uh, and it takes time. But each president, in all seriousness, the deference sort of goes away as time goes by. How many stories do you think were written about um, Laura and George Bush holding hands, walking out of church? I think a lot of stories were written about <laughs> do you that. you remember I mean, It's a little ridiculous, don't you think? Month period? Wait, 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 wait. wait. The 18-month period between September 12th and about, I would argue, about uh, January 1st of 2003. I mean, he, but the president, you know, I'm not saying that any, that coverage is poll-driven, but when a president's popular, everything the press does seems to amplify that popularity. And when a president's not popular, it looks like everything the press is doing is amplifying the negativity. I, I just think that. Let's you don't not, think there's been an in, inordinate yeah. coverage? You don't think there's been inordinate coverage of the vegetable garden or the walk in the moonlight or social secretary Desiree Rogers, you know, at the Kennedy Center, or Mother Robinson, you know, uh, you know around three town? Months. It's the first no. 100 days of our first No, it isn't. Uh, we're, we're beyond 100 days. It was the month of 100 days, Chuck. I, look, I hear you. I hear you. I, ask me again in three months. Right now, right. it feels excessive. I think over the next three months, you'll see that it won't feel as excessive when we look back.